What's up guys, Rascal Ryan 521 here, and today I am going to be bringing you my review of Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 10, called The Children. And, um, I'm a little late on this review, <laughs> I'm sorry for that, um, I've been meaning to get to it for a while, about a week now. I'm so far, I'm, I think I'm about halfway through Season 5, so yeah, this one is a little late. Um, but I just want to say overall, this episode, I need to do a review of it. It's kind of like the Reigns of Castamere, not quite as, not, not quite as a big of an event. Um, but so much happened in this one that I felt I needed to do the review of it. Um, this is this episode, uh, The Reigns of Castamere, and, um, and Now His Watch Has Ended, where Daenerys gets, like, the whole army of the Unsullied, that one. Um, those are, like, in my opinion, the three best episodes of Game of Thrones. So let's, um, let's get right into it. Um, got my phone right here. I'm gonna be, uh, gonna be reading some uh, plot lines off of it, because, like I said, I kind of forgot some stuff. Okay, so we start this episode, as you know, um... Jon Snow basically going to, um, basically marching over to Mance Raider's, um, little hideout, little camp place. Um, I think he was trying to, like, wasn't he trying to offer him, like, safe, or he was trying to offer him, like, a treaty, I think, trying to just, you know, because, uh, as you know, the episode before this, we had the battle, the huge uh, battle at the wall. That's all the episode focused on. And while they're talking, of course, um, Davos and the Red Chick, um, they just... They show up, they start attacking Stannis and all of his men. Uh, they come in, and they kind of, um, the point I'm at now, they're actually still at, um, they're still at the wall. So, um, so it looks like something big's gonna happen with Stannis. It looks like he's trying to, uh, make a comeback ever since his huge failure at, uh, Blackwater. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, uh, so yeah, so we've got that. We've got, um, the Mountain, who's recovering from his poisoning, um, from the battle with, um, he recovered from the poisoning when he was battling, um, Oberyn, Prince Oberyn Martell, which, to those of you that don't watch it, oh my god, that battle, holy crap, uh, Oberyn's death is the most shocking thing I have ever seen out of any movie, out of any TV show, out of anything. No, it's not really that was shocking, it's like, it was so disgusting and so gory that it just I mean he's got his eyes he's got the mountains got his thumbs and his eyes it's like Elia Martell I raped her and they crushed her head like this he smashes his he puts his he smashes his head her head his head together and his head just like explodes in a pile of blood and brains everywhere oh my god that was that was hard to watch man that was just so monumentally disturbing and just horrifying. Oh my god. That was that was intense. That was a good ending to the episode. And then, you know, Tyrion Lannister, you're here by sentence to death, you know, and then, yeah, that whole conflict. Um, so, let's see. And then, uh, Cersei goes to Tywin, and of course, she tells him that the rumors between her and Jaime, you know, it's true. It's, it's true. It's true. We all know it was true because. We saw it in the first episode, and Tywin doesn't want to believe it, but Cersei even says, you know you believe it, you know it's true. <laughs> okay, so, um, let's see here. And then, you know, her and Jamie get it on again, you know. <laughs> um, now we cut to Daenerys, who is actually, um, she's, uh, in her quarters, and as you know, the one guy brings in the bones of his dead daughter, like, three-year-old daughter, that died because of, uh, was it, I don't think it was Drogon, it might have been one, I can't remember which dragon, it was either Drogon or it was one of the other two, I don't remember which dragon it was, but one of the dragons killed him, so she basically goes into the quarters of her dragons, and she, uh, she has, you know, uh, ties them up, or kind of puts chains around them, and then locks the, locks the door of, like, the little dungeon that they're staying in, and as you know, it breaks her heart, she's even crying as she walks out, um, so that was pretty sad. Um, uh, just more stuff with John and Ygritte, um, nothing too, nothing I should really need to talk about. Um, uh, we have, uh, the brand storyline reach, um, reach it, the, its climax, um, where we have these skeletons pop out of the ground as they're reaching their destination. Uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, as, um, they're reaching their destination. And, um, yeah, there it is. I saw something on the camera, I got there, but, um, yeah, so we saw, um, them reach their destination, and the skeletons pop out of the ground. They start attacking Hodor, and Bran basically rolls his eyes into the back of his head type of thing. And, um, he wargs, I think is what it's called. Um, 
and he basically, um, he's taking over, um, Hodor's mind, you know, Hodor's going crazy, Hodor, Hodor, you know, he takes over his mind, and then, um, basically Hodor's able to fend him off, and then, um, what's his name, uh, Jojen, the little blonde kid, <laughs> he ends up, uh, dying, um, and this little girl, um, who, um, she's called, they called them the children, which is where we get the name of this episode, um, she basically comes out, and she, uh, she starts throwing, like, fireballs or whatever they are at the skeletons, and she leads them inside, and they meet up with this one guy who says that, uh, who says he can help out Bran, and he says, um, he says that, um, he, Bran's like, hopefully, like, maybe I'll be able to walk again. He says, you will never walk, but you may be able to fly, or something along those lines, so. I don't think, I don't think we saw, so far, I'm, like I said, I'm halfway through season five. I haven't seen any of Bran yet. Not sure if we'll see him for the other half of the season, um, but, uh, we'll just see. I guess we'll see when we, uh, we get there. We'll probably see, see him a little bit in season six. Um, not to be mean, though, uh, Bran's storyline is my least favorite of the whole show. It's not very interesting. Or, I mean, it's interesting, but it's not really, uh, it's the least interesting out of all of them, I would say. And then, my second favorite storyline of the show, in this episode, is, um, um, Arya and the Hound versus, um, Brienne and Podrick. Um, basically, um, Brienne finds Arya and the Hound, and she says, you know, I swore an oath to your mother that I would bring you back um, to, you know, bring you back to safety, um, and Arya doesn't want to go with her, she doesn't trust her, she doesn't trust anybody, I mean, she saw, she's seen so much, she's been through so much, she was, like, mere, like, inches away from being spotted by Lannister men and getting killed in the Red Wedding, she saw her dad's head get cut off, it's, she's not had a good life, man, uh, but she doesn't trust anybody, so she doesn't trust Brienne, her, so Brienne and the Hound get into a huge sword fight, super climactic, um, and unfortunately it does result in Brienne getting the upper hand, um, getting a couple of good blows in there, and I think she, think she punches him in the face a bunch of times in a row, and then pushes him off a cliff, um, and then we see, uh, later on, Arya goes over to the Hound, and we see her, um, uh, kind of just, uh, you know, she's trying to, you know, the Hound's, like, just begging her just to kill him, because she knows that she's, uh, he knows that he's, uh, dead, pretty much. He's just, you know, just begging, he's trying to make her mad, say things like, you know, like, make fun of, like, the way her brother and her dad died and whatnot to get him, to, you know, to get her mad enough so maybe she'll kill him and put him out of his misery. But she just simply takes his bag of silver and walks away. <laughs> um, so it's open to interpretation, but I think we're, for the most part, supposed to believe that, uh, the Hound is dead. Um, so that's very unfortunate. The Hound... Tyrion and Arya, my three favorite characters in the whole show, so one of them being dead. Two more favorites now. Um, after that, we've got Jaime Lannister. Jaime Lannister is another one of my favorite characters. He's really, he's really come into, uh, come into a good, um, um, just he's really become an awesome character. He's really redeemed himself. Um, so as you know, Jaime Lannister, he uh, frees Tyrion from a cell. Um, he's got this whole plan worked out, and while Tyrion's going back to his cell, he goes into Tywin's quarters, and he sees, uh, Shay there, and Shay panics a little bit, and they get into a little bit of a scuffle, and he pretty much just ends up, uh, choking the life out of her with a blanket, which was very, very sad, that was just, I mean... I mean, if those of you who don't watch, Shay was his wife. Like, I don't know if they ever got married, but they were at least, they were like a really close, I mean, she was a whore. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the, I'm not trying to be mean, that, that's exactly what she was. She was a prostitute. And, um, he, she even used that, you know, they, she even used that against uh, Tyrion and Tyrion's trial. Um, remember? I am a whore, remember? Um, but, uh, yeah, so she was, but she was still, um, she still cared for Tyrion, that's the thing, and, um, uh, you know, you feel sad, but you also feel happy when, um, you also feel happy when, after what she did at Tyrion's trial, pretty much, um, making it seem like Sansa and Tyrion, or Sansa, sorry, Sansa and Tyrion kind of plotted to kill Joffrey together, which we all know wasn't true. It was Littlefinger. Um, I believe it was Littlefinger that killed him, wasn't it? Or at least not killed him, like, directly, but he was, like, responsible for it, for the poisoning. Um, so that part was really sad. Then he picks up the crossbow, 
goes over to the bathroom or the privy, whatever you want to call it, um, and he sees Tywin there, and Tywin is uh, on the crapper, <laughs> um, and he, he pulls the the crossbow on Tywin, and Tyrion's even saying stuff, you know, like um, like you knew I didn't poison Joffrey, yet you still you still um, sent me sends me to death, you know, and it's like and he's like, you know, you Tyrion, enough of this nonsense, you are my son, and um. He's basically like, he's basically what, what, you were in love with that whore or whatever, and Tyrion aims the crossbow right at him and says, say that again, say that one more time. Um, he's kind of just doing like the Samuel Jackson Pulp Fiction, say it again, MF, or that kind of thing. <laughs> and he's basically, uh, Tywin's like, you know, let's go to my private quarters, we can talk about it. And then he's like, I can't, she's in there. He's like, what, you're afraid of a dead whore? Boom. Shoots the crossbow right in his chest, he's like, you shot me, you are no son of mine. And then Tyrion says... I am your son, and I always will be your son, or something like that. And then he shoots him again, and it kills him. This time it's, like, right dead center in the chest. Um, so this time it does kill him. Um, and then, let's see. And then he basically goes over to... He makes his way to Varys, and Varys um, locks him in this uh, crate, puts it on this boat, and you can hear the bells tolling in the background, and he gets on the boat, and, you know, Tyrion and Varys are sailing off for, um... Um... Oh, well, I'm not sure if they were planning on going to Daenerys at the time. I'm not sure if they really had a game plan, or if they were just trying to get the heck out of Dodge, um, out of just out of King's Landing. I'm not sure. Um, but we do find out later on that they are planning on going to, um... to Daenerys, to, um... I can't think of the name of where she's staying right now. Um... Oh, man. Yeah, I can't think. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, we get to, um, then we cut to Arya. She goes over to this, um, he goes to this guy. Um, she says she wants to go north of the wall, sail on his boats. And the guy doesn't, he doesn't even, he doesn't even take her seriously. He's just like, she go away, little girl. And um, basically, she gives him the, the Vala Mogolis coin. And he's like, just as you wish. It's like, just like a, it's so important, such a big deal in, um, Westeros, he just he uh, decides to take her north of the wall. So, um, so she's on her way to um, what's it called, the castle, black and white, something like that. Um, but yeah, overall, you guys, great, great episode. Like I said, one of my top three episodes in the series so far. Um, yeah, I definitely, I love this one. I think t uh, Tyrion killing Tywin and Shay is like. One of the best um, Tyrion moments of the whole show. I'm so glad he was able to get revenge on the two people that hated him the most. Well, well, I, I guess. I mean, Tyrion and Tywin. I don't know if he exactly hated him. He, he didn't like him. That, that's for sure. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he really hated him. I don't know if you can really hate your son. Um, but I suppose he kind of did. Um, I know at this point Shay hated him because um, he thought she thought that um, Tyrion was a. Uh, Abandoning her for Sansa, he she thought that he was a uh, he wanted the wedding to happen. Whether you know in real life though, he actually he wanted to stay with Shay and he didn't want to marry um, Sansa, but Tywin made him. Um, so yeah, um, great performances from Peter Dinklage. Um, I think Charles Dance is that the name of the guy that plays Tywin. Um, amazing performance from him. Um, sad that we're never gonna see scenes between. Um, Tyrion and Bronn, or Tyrion and Jaime again, because uh, they, um, they made, like, great pairs. Um, especially Bronn is so cool, too, Tyrion and Bronn. I'm actually glad that him and Jaime are working together now, because they make a cool pair. Any Anybody is with. He's just an awesome character. So, this episode, like, I don't know if I'd give it, like, a 1 out of 10 rating, I'd probably say, like, 10. It's one of the most perfect episodes of Game of Thrones ever. Um, like I said, definitely my top three, unless there's a new episode in Season 5, or Season 6, that, um, that is uh, just as uh, good or even better. Probably will be because the show is always getting better. There's more storylines, more characters being introduced. It's always getting better. So tell me what you think of it, guys, and uh, give me your thoughts down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.